I can't believe I stuck with I didn't even flip through any of the choices for our horrible opener music. <laughs> it sounds right like we're default. I know. It sounds like we're in a Coca-Cola commercial. Or or like the interstitial sort of um ads that you see between movies. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Right? Yeah. This is yeah. film facts with Maria Menounos. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what it is. It's so funny. <laughs> Well, you know exactly what it is, is um, it's Moo Mammo, which is Mutants Masterminds Monday. And uh, it's a it's a little program that we've been doing for, shoot, 17 years. Right. Give or and take. Um, yeah, it's been a, a lot of fun. We are all um, 80 yeah. years old. And mm -hmm. um, but it's about Mutants Masterminds, uh, the tabletop RPG. And we feel as though we can claim an expertise uh, in this arena because we have both the mutants and master daddy and then the mutants and master bro is that what we said or mutants master buddy buddy is fun i like buddy a mutant but only master buddy. i'm playing the teddy bear on a show right now uh-huh uh, nice nice but i'm talking of course about these two all right first let me do this because honestly i feel like i'm marching us into the most boring war in the world there we go um but uh it's these two gents hi guys Hello. hi there hey we've got Whistle, we do in fact see your messages on stream so welcome who uh who yes hello Friends. All the way from Uruguay. Right? Nice. Yes, they do. That's great. I thought you said, uh, for a moment, I thought you said Crystal. I was like, oh, oh if, only. if only. We do. We do miss our good friend. Um, but uh, yes, hello to everybody in chat. Say hello to our friends, Steve Kenson and Alex everybody. Thomas. And then of, I, of course, am your only friend, the disembodied Troy. Um, and uh, now if you take a look in the bottom left hand, yeah, the bottom left, uh, stage right, you will see a um, a beautiful piece of art. I just love it. And now you get to see me. I'm embodied. Right. Um, as a as a fine mist. Uh, RC says, bueno tardes, friendos. Um, and to, unto you as well. Gene, you know what? Gene is really the star of today's show. Indeed. Because, Gene, this was your idea, this international adventure, and um, a great subject, millions of ways to go about it. Um, and we will, of course, lean into our expertise. And, uh, and of course, you know, uh, chat will always be here to help and weigh in and, and of course, uh, you know, cause shenanigans. Like Dominic, who says, hello, hello, hello. Um, and then again, of course, yeah, Thistle, we uh, do see you, and we're so glad you're here all the way from Uruguay. That's great. Um, let's see. They look just like their pictures. Yes, RC says you guys look very much like uh, the images of your face. Uh, Simon says, "Yep, okay." Simon says, "I like that. That's a new feature we'll do today." Corey Alcorn, uh, I would expect gents to be wearing top hat. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I'll I'll accept that note, and we'll see what happens next week. <laughs> um, yeah, you're here, David. That's great. And uh, Oranon says, "Troy VTuber reveal when?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. Um, uh, here's something, okay, you know what, I think that what we'll do from now on, and this is absolutely no shade on you, uh, my friend, uh, Craft01, uh, asked this question, what's the latest word on getting M&M on Foundry? So, how it works is, we've got an amazing tiny team, who does amazing big things, yeah, small team, but big impact, mm -hmm. and, uh, we chose to begin with Roll20 because that's just sort of the way we were doing that. But in concurrently, we're working on some stuff with Foundry. We've got licenses, um, uh, we've got uh, contracts are signed, and all those things are, um, there's some backend stuff that we need to work out. Like we sell codes and things. We'll do that through the Green Ronin online store. Um, I don't believe Foundry has a marketplace. But all that is to say, coming soon, but boy, we wouldn't want to put a date on it. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and so that's your answer uh in progress actively um let's see uh, simon says gene's not the only one who's wondering about international adventures yes absolutely hello aj apu good to see you as well um listen before we dive in i have just a quick little thing i want to share um you know our friends over at uh, handelabra games they mm -hmm. launched sentinels of earth prime 
Mm -hmm. And uh, Alex and I played last week, Steve, because you were out. You missed out. um, But we had a really good time. And uh, it was a lot of fun. And they're a great partner. They're a lot. Tablet last week and lost to uh, the MetaGrew. To the MetaGrew MetaMind. Yeah, it's serious. I mean, that's a, it's a serious game with uh, serious ramifications. It was a lot of fun, and we of course we had John on. He, he's just great, uh, really, really great at uh, helping us kind of walk through the process. Well, so you know, uh, gangbusters. Sure that was nice. Say that again. I'm sorry. And making sure we won. That was really uh, nice. yeah, yeah. We did kind of <laughs> we did kind of depend on John to get us through some hair raising uh, battles, but it was super fun. And so. Um, we decided, you know, we've got, uh, in, you know, just to celebrate and also because there were so many great suggestions during that stream of things that you can do with the cards. Right. Uh, so we're having a sale. Awesome. And the sale, yeah, the sale is, um, it's right here at the bottom. There it is. Nope, that's the little one. The there it is. <laughs> there you go. So here's the magic. You just take your phone and you scan it on that QR code and it will take you right to the sale. And um, the sale includes things like, what does it include? Um, the game. Mm-hmm. It includes, oh, we've also got, um, let's see here. Let me and get our back expansion to packs. That's the expansion packs, which is uh, Eldred. You know, I'm actually going to do this. We've got the technology. Um, but yeah, so it, it's everything at that link, and um, you can uh, pick it up 15% off. Just marked down, ready, and waiting for you. And uh, let me do this real fast. There we go. All right, you guys are down at the bottom there with QR code over your face, but uh, we'll do that. We'll do this quickly. But uh, look at all this stuff. So you've got um, all of this stuff is on sale, and uh, and the game as well. So um, get in here and uh, and grab some uh, if you haven't already. I know that a lot of the folks who are regular watchers. Um, they have already picked it up. And so, but if you haven't, now's the opportunity. Right. Awesome. There we go. So I'm going to leave this QR code at the bottom. And so give that a, um, a shot with your phone. And um, and then we'll have another, we'll, we'll stick the Q, uh, tiny QR code up in the corner um, a little later. And uh, let's see, RC, yes, a story. You should just add it on the background. Trust <laughs> any factory announcements would be in. <laughs> That's true. People right. are curious though set up an uh, faq background yeah oh, yeah exactly um <clears throat> that would be nice just day to day just normal walking around in the meat space um right. oh hey look at this so, so this says uh, dope i've run tons of games set within south america and outside the okay awesome um so folks if you nice. if you have had experience putting together some international adventure uh, mm-hmm. what are some tricks and things as we kind of go on to it but i'm going to turn it over to you two let's talk about international adventure <laughs> international adventures are great um they and i know steve and i are both speaking as americans and right. i as an american who has not left the country i went to canada once but that's, that's that doesn't count yes. yeah um but i think international adventures give you a chance to showcase that the superhero world is a lot bigger than just New York city. And there are places that there are so many things going on and there are so many things that you can tap into from a worldwide perspective Mm -hmm. that really adds a, it adds a sense of realism and a sense of scope to your adventures when they take place outside of your neighborhood. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead, Steve. Well, I was thinking about how, uh, when we were working on Atlas of earth prime, uh, which was basically looking at the, the bigger world outside of uh, Freedom City and Emerald City uh, on Earth Prime. We put together uh, a set of guidelines for writers uh, who are going to do work on different regions uh, and the like, and how we wanted to both um, take the idea of, of applying some of the comic book tropes uh, that you find in um, American superhero comics to different regions of the world um, and playing around with those ideas um, and uh, creating characters based on them. And at the same time, uh, putting together the list of some of the 
uh, American comic book tropes about international superheroes that you definitely did not want to do. <laughs> right. As far as that went, because, you know, uh, it, American comics have, have a terrible history with that sort of thing. Uh, and we wanted to try and avoid that as much as we possibly could. Right, right. You know, and sometimes the 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 trope of the Indiana Jones, which is fun because it's adventure, it's relics, it's all mm -hmm. that, but it's also you know, uh, colonizing mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. I mean, you know, how I, I think there's still room, of course, to have the fun without all of the yucky but yucky bits. But how do you maneuver? What are some things that you think about when you're kind of putting those pieces together? Well, one of our key things was to try and avoid stereotyping as much as possible. Um, uh, we really wanted to avoid the, um, uh, you know, what we referred to as the, the captain country effect, uh, you know, of I am the stereotypical representative of this entire civilization yeah, yeah. or culture uh, sort of characters as much as we could and make them as individual as they are in our, you know, uh, all the rest of our, our American cities, fictional though they are. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a couple comments. Um, one is that, uh, let's see, who was that? It was uh, Claude, of course. Indiana Jones was a major missed opportunity to have a hero who only visits cities in Indiana. And I, of course, said, you're thinking of the GM that got stuck at Gen Con, and that's Indiana Jonesy. Yes. <laughs> yes. We're making a T-shirt out of that. Well well known for the, the expression, this belongs in VTT. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> He Jonesy is kind of like an Indiana Jones going from TTRP to TTRB, TTRPG, yeah. sorry, burp, yeah. burp, 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 grabbing art and mm -hmm. sharing it with the with everyone. Yeah, sort of a mix in of virtual, uh, in the virtual world. Yeah, sort of a yeah, sort of a digital Indiana Jones and Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. Indiana Jonesy, I like it. Yeah, the best of all of them. Absolutely. Let's see. Uh, I want to take a quick look at the, some of the questions. Um, too bad there was no art for UK Bulldogs. I'm reading backwards, so I don't know what we're talking about. I'm hoping it's appropriate. I've been trying to find GMs from other cultures to play. Oh, I like that. I played an African-based game when I was working at MS uh, with the with a college from Zimbabwe. Yeah, I mean that's a thoughtful mm -hmm. that's a thoughtful piece of you know of, of the sure. discussion is you know definitely and it's not all it's not all dipping into culture right I mean it's no. yeah I mean um, and some of it is you know ideally you know and we tried to go to um, local authors as much as we could oh yeah uh, to try and get folks to write about their region of the world. Um, for Alice and Ruth Prime, where we could, um, and we didn't always find someone um, who was available, who was you know from that region to write about it as much as we wanted to. Um, ideally, if you have the opportunity to you know play a game with a, a game master from somewhere, you know who can tell you about their region and set a game there, that's great. You know that's sort of the ideal situation. Yeah. Um, but if you don't have that option, then the next best thing you can do is to do your research, uh, and at least try and learn as much as you can, uh, about where you're setting, you know, your international adventure or story, uh, or the like. Absolutely. I do, I do think it's interesting. Um, I've particularly been taking a look at, there's a growing, um, comic book publishing industry in Nigeria, for example. Um, that are doing their own local comic books, superhero comics, and the like. And it's really interesting to take a look at that, um, so cool. you know, perspective. Absolutely. You, you, uh, folks can check out, there's a lot of, if you li literally just type in Nigerian comic books, you will see just a wealth of. Yeah, there's a ton of them. Yeah, really, really great stuff. Yeah, Steve turned me on to those. They're so cool. <laughs> me too, actually. Yeah, yeah. We're, I'm now, you know, following him uh, both on my personal account and uh, through our Green Ronin Instagram account because they do a lot of posting there. Um, great stuff. Now, there was a quite, you know, uh, Jay, I wanted to throw something out to you. Jay Gray is here, um, mm -hmm. our, the, the OG Link Wizard, and says, I personally have a hard time running games in other cultural settings. I'm definitely interested in this topic. And, you know, and Jay, I'm wondering from your perspective, is it the daunting sort of notion of wanting to represent them, you know, you know uh, that that uh, community well, or is there 
something else, you know, that, uh, that we can help you with. Um, it would be interesting to kind of hear your thoughts. Uh, I also want to note that this all says, uh, not a big fan of, um, of, uh, our friend Indiana Jones as, uh, they are a, um, an archeology span student. <laughs> <laughs> I'd imagine. I, I could imagine Indy makes it really hard for real archaeologists. Absolutely, because you're just sitting there doing some archaeology, and here he comes busting through and stealing your stuff. Setting expectations. <laughs> right? I mean, he must be just a, a nightmare for college campuses. They're easy to steal from. He's just hanging right. out there all the time. He also gives people very unrealistic views of tenure. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. Um, let's see. What countries is Mutants and Masterminds available in? Many, yeah. all of them. No, I mean, I, I, I language is. Yeah, we'll I have to find say, it. If we're talking about translations, yeah, that's another matter, mm -hmm. and that is a challenge. But we have dropped a book in every country on the planet. <laughs> if you can find it, it's yours. Um, that was my first test for becoming the new developer. Right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Drop a book. <laughs> Mm -hmm. that's absolutely right um john says john pologic says even for street level superheroes or teen supers who may not be able to easily travel to other nations there are still neighborhoods and countries uh with very different cultures chinatowns louisiana mm -hmm. yeah absolutely sure. absolutely yeah and, and so so what is the the that key first moment you know uh of of really setting that stage um because, you know, I, I was thinking, too, I wrote it in the promo, we can tear the reality apart uh, into shreds and have multiple variations of the reality that you live in, but then never leave the country. <laughs> Even though you're like, and now I'm in a new country, or I'm in a new version of the country I'm always in, only this time make it gravy. You know, like, that's the kind of, uh, and so what are some of the things that a GM ought to do to sort of get their head in the in the cultural game, but also just in the whole, like, you know, do we make a... Um, uh, you know, if we're going to Italy, do we make a uh, uh, spaghetti? Well, I mean, I think that Oranon raises a good point to start off with: is is ask yourself why are you, you know, doing oh, yeah. a national game, and you know, what are you trying to get out of it? Do you want it to have a different point of view? Do you want a different perspective? Do you want to focus on something unique about a particular part of the world? Uh, you know, uh, is it just a change of pace thing? Uh, is it a globe hopping story where characters are going to be visiting lots of different places? You know, and just get a sense of what you're trying to accomplish first, and then you can kind of map it out from there. Yeah, and I think um, starting with historical events that took place in other countries, if you're looking for story ideas and things to seed, I think that's a good place to start, um, to start thinking of how the story fits into the framework of the story you're trying to tell. Mm -hmm. um, whether your whole campaign is an international adventure or your American heroes are taking an international jaunt somewhere. Right. Um, and I think, it, it, I think the best thing you can do is come from a place of understanding that you might not know as much as you want to know and a willingness to learn and a willingness to present things accurately and to avoid uh, falling into stereotypes or overly simplifying people mm -hmm. so for you gentlemen what what is your relationship with research is it just is it a is it an abusive. albatross that you suffer it's abusive <laughs> <laughs> um or uh, they you know they mention um uh you know international characters and organizations where to research and that's you know there is mm -hmm. an art to kind of going with the flow and getting into that, that sort of research headspace. Cause it's different than anything else, really. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, some thoughts, so, so, some thoughts on that would be great. I'm a huge fan of research. Um, I tend to over prepare <clears throat> when I'm going into things, but it depends on what media I'm trying to present. Um, like recently in the game I'm running on stream, we went to Vietnam to an old Soviet, um, base that the Arctic Fox had maintained during his time there. Mm -hmm. And we got into the topic of Vietnamese folk religions in the area. So I really wanted to make sure I did a lot of research and made sure I presented that in a way that was respectful mm -hmm. and accurate and actually had some bearing on the type of story I was telling. Um, and I, I went down that rabbit hole pretty hard because <laughs> that's the other thing about <laughs> research is that I can overly do it. Mm -hmm. 
Right, right. It's like you gotta, you gotta catch them all. I think that, uh, you know, you got to, I agree with Alex, it's super easy to just go disappear down a, a research rabbit hole. And you oftentimes have to focus your research on what the adventure is going to call for, or at least what you think is going to be involved. You know, so like when um, in Black Panther, when they go to Korea um, to visit an underground arms deal, um, you know, you, you think very carefully about what things about Korea do you need to know mm -hmm. uh, in order to do that scene. You know, uh, you probably don't need to know anything outside of the city where it takes place, uh, for example. Um, yeah. You don't need to know a lot about, uh, you know, the culture outside of what you're going to expect to find in an underground casino. Sure. Uh, you know, and things like that. But, you know, there's going to be a car chase. So getting a notion of what the city streets look like is probably a good idea. Uh, as far as that goes, traffic laws. Right. Hey, sure, yeah. Laws, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, um, one of the things I was thinking of as well, and you know, and I, I don't want to. I know that there's some folks kind of having a, a discussion and a, a very, and I appreciate it, respectful exchange on sort of cultural issues and all that stuff. We don't want to get bogged down in all of that, but we acknowledge all of us that there are aspects of our past that are that is problematic but it is reality and we can move through all of that and still enjoy the things we enjoy you know just without burning the whole house down so um yeah and then so i, I want to say that just kudos to the chat but i also want to say that um there's an i or the great sort of idea here um in the chat about um bringing in or uh, bringing in some people who uh the writers that you were talking about some of the local writers and doing like a panel discussion um but Based on when you do your research, where are you keeping your snippets of details and information? Are you are you clipping newspapers? Are you going to the library and Xeroxing? You have a microfiche. Like, how are you doing all that? Uh, I'm a big fan of going down different Wikipedia rabbit holes. Oh, um, sure. I went to school in the early 2000s, and they told us we weren't allowed to. Uh, <laughs> but I organize all my research on a software called Scrivener that has a whole, there's a whole bunch of oh. index cards and things like that, where I can put links, I can put screenshots, I can put anything that I'm looking into and I can build cards between these things to sort of have different, like, well, how, why are these related? What do I want to do with this? And, right. um, again, to trumpet the, um, being sensitive and being accurate, I think that is another great opportunity to bring something up in your session zero. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Agreed. Oh, yeah, yeah. We love a session zero, don't we? We do. Oh, yeah. We do. And I think that it's important, while it is important to be sensitive and to be accurate, I think that it's also uh, important not to um, feel paralyzed. By mm -hmm. that. I would rather, as a game master, uh, present something with the possibility that I might slip up um, and have to say, yeah, you know, all right, that could have been better, um, you know, and take some feedback and improve rather than let the fear that I'm going to slip up keep me from doing it at all. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that just is depriving my players of an experience. Yeah. And yourself of building the goes. capacity to just yeah. to, to maneuver through these, you know, they, they are not impossible. No. No, not at all. I mean, and, and not to trivialize, you know, people's feelings over it, but it is still just a game. Yeah, that's right. And and while I think that there are moments and times where games as a tool for teaching and learning, um, that's that's great. But it also mm -hmm. sometimes it's just fun. And that's that's good, too. Um, doing it right. thoughtfully right. and on purpose to be thoughtful, it, it gives you a lot of latitude and a lot of leeway to have some I fun. I think so, yeah. And I think that you should, I think as a DM, your players should trust you enough to give you the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Um, you know, to assume good intent with you. I would hope and so. And you should be able to foster an environment where you, where you do have good intentions. And when you make a mistake, you just own it and keep moving. Mm -hmm. uh, Jay Gray uh, responded to our question, and I think it's really great. And uh, I'm going to 
truncated a bit. The issue for me is that as the GM, it's my responsibility to cater the table for fun, but respectful to the abstractions of culture that may be there. In the Peruvian game, I did uh, tons of research and asked the players what of their culture did they want represented. That seems familiar. I think, Jay, we might have talked about this in the past. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a shimmer of that sort of uh, looks familiar to me. And I'm faced with the worry that I may accidentally turn the representation into caricatures instead of reasonable abstractions. Yeah, you know, I, I'll, I'll just say to Steve's point, having that notion and that attitude and, and uh, embracing it in, in a way that is that allows you to do it. And then also you're just doing, you, you be a, a, a thoughtful participant and, and mm-hmm. I think you're going to be okay. I mean, especially with that much thought and attention to detail. Um, I like that. So let's see. Dominic says, use my tabletop RPGs as an excuse to provide Carmen San Diego. <laughs> No. Oh, darn it. I forgot I was going to do a whole Rockapella um, uh, knockoff song mm-hmm. called Where in the World is Alex and Steve Kenson? <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I'm going to uh, maybe I'll do it at the end. Uh, but yeah, great. That's fun stuff. Um, another reason to run hero games globally. A lot of other countries have different relationships with heroes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And I think it's important to note that you get the opportunity to sort of fictionalize that relationship much in the same way we do with American superheroes. You know, I mean, Mm -hmm. truth be told, if real people existed with superpowers, it would probably be way more like the boys than, you know, like comics. Yeah. Um, But, you know, for some of us who want, you know, a fun experience of, you know, people with superpowers doing good things. Um, we, we just sort of, you know, abstract a certain amount of that and assume that in the comic book world, you know, things just are a little better. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. And, and I think people are perfectly, you know, uh, have license to do that in their own setting, whether it's, it's in or out of America um, to just say, you know, well, yeah, realistically superheroes would never fly here, but you know, no pun intended. Um, right, right. <laughs> but you know, I'm, I've decided that they do. You know, and that people are fine with it. You know, I that's, believe you. That the I believe, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, that that's interesting. I'm thinking too. You know, uh, superheroes don't fly here. When you think about North Korea, or you think about like sort of aspects of these sort of uh, totalitarian governments where they wouldn't fly, or only one would. And you know, uh, I, that that's an interesting sort of opportunity to sort of deal with a, a threat or a, a mm-hmm. discussion or, or save the day or the, you know, this is really interesting, Simon, this is great. Simon talks about one trick I've done was to listen to the local radio or watch a local TV from the area, if it's possible to do online, which it really is very pretty easy to do. Sure. When I made my uh, Gibraltar adventure, I was listening to radio Gibraltar online all day. Yeah, that's great. That's a yeah. super, yeah, a little, yeah. little slice I mean, of life. And especially uh, if you can um, get street view images and oh, Google, like yeah, yeah. places, you know, just to get a sense of, you know, what they look like. Um, you know, don't go with what you think a place looks like. Actually go and see what it looks like if you're using a real location. Um, because, you know, I mean, literally there's satellite imagery of pretty much every inch of the earth at this point. True. Yeah. Yeah. And ready-made maps to trace to kind of you know utilize in your uh hey, steve did we um, um forgive me if i glossed over this as i was reading the um mm-hmm. the chat but did you talk about your tools for uh um saving research stuff do you have a special are you uh, just for like me, for me it's mostly a mass of of bookmark internet bookmarks and folders <laughs> full of full of screenshots and, <laughs> right and right downloaded photos and you know, and tabs upon tabs. Uh, yeah, open tabs. <laughs> that should have been one of the books in the Cthulhu Awakens GM screen. It's just like right. A... It's just just massive open tabs, right? <laughs> and, and you click through them, and it gets deeper and deeper. And like, I don't yeah. remember opening this tab. That's right. Why do I have an order, or I didn't pay this bill on this right. tab? <laughs> Funny. Um, yeah, and uh, oh, you know, and just a shout out to Hanover. Uh, you, the, the, that it doesn't all have to be culture. I mean, it can just be all of the pomp and circumstance of, you know, sort of uh, diplomats meeting as heroes and uh, and the intrigues of that can be a lot of fun. Sure. Um, let's see. Um, sorry, Thistle, I'm going to check your, I'm going to read that in just one moment. Um, 
let's see, I've had some adventures in, uh, Rebel Moose says, I've had some adventures in different nations. If I'm too busy to do a lot of research into local cultures and stuff, I'll just look into environments and weather and have that be the, f- yes, mm-hmm. okay. Sure. And that's a big influence as well on, on what a location is like. Uh, yeah. Things like its its weather and its its environment. It's even big on their mythology. Like a lot of places, yeah. their mythology is a certain way because the weather is a certain way. Right. Like right. The Egyptian gods are viewed as benevolent because the Nile floods predictably every year. So the- right. The- yeah. Fast. That adds a whole nother dynamic to to the mm-hmm. the layers that you kind of unpeel. And then you know, it's interesting. Claude says that's a great point. I've often avoided using different cultures, background, sexuality before because it worries me about misstepping. But then you have a world that doesn't reflect those players' reality. Exactly. And there's also moments where, when you're in a new space, you see it for the first time. It looks one way, but when you see it for the 80th time, you know a lot more about what's kind of just on the other side of the facade or just you know you know things that were kind of murky become a little clearer and that's also just the kind of the way it works if you're not familiar with a particular culture you familiarize yourself and that Mm -hmm. could be an adventure in itself really yeah and being willing to familiarize yourself with other perspectives is a good thing anyway even if you don't use it in your game that's just that is a self-improvement tool right see Mm -hmm. we're we're improving lives they they say travel is broadening, and if you can't be there in person, at least researching is the next best thing. That's right. Go there Go there via Google Maps. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, so Hanover brings up a good point, too, and that is the notion, and this is all that Session Zero good stuff, but to ask mm-hmm. players if there's anything they'd want to avoid. There are a lot of things going on across sure. the globe and even in our fair country that um, – a little overwhelming and so and Absolutely. again people might want to play superheroes to escape right exactly and if you're if you're playing a certain style of superhero game then for example sending the characters to a uh, a real war zone in the world um might not be appropriate right um, because it may uh, amongst other things raise questions that you don't want your campaign to tackle like if there are superheroes, why aren't they stopping wars? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Your campaign is about is how the heroes are here to stop the war. Right, exactly. Unless that's what your campaign's about. Mm-hmm. You know. Very thoughtful, very interesting moment to kind of pull out and say, you know, that you don't want to create a conflict between the person playing the hero and the hero as mm-hmm. they play. I mean, that's a that's right. kind of a right. bummer. And, um, and you just don't want to create a conflict in the tone of your game. Yeah, uh, if it's about you know uh, four color superheroes fighting crime and preventing supervillains from taking over the world, yeah, then they're probably not going to be taking on a lot of of real war crimes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and Jay, Jay Gray does let us know as well that that it, he did mention that in in shows past, which shows the, my um, mm-hmm. recall is not as good as Steve's, which Claude says has uh, Steve has the perfect recall of all he's learned in the millennia he's walked this earth. They're on DSR. Mm-hmm. They are on the oh. It's true. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, Jay is actually uh, psychically writing my next campaign. Oh, interesting. What do you? <laughs> me in my dreams. It's real, real scary stuff. <laughs> okay. yeah, I love it. Um, effective as well. Uh, Jay Gray says uh, last message. Seriously, uh, Jay's got to go pick up the kids or drop them off or you know something. And uh, so, uh, seriously, you should do an episode on how you go about designing a GM screen. That's yeah. I mean, it does sort of touch on this sort of organizing and yeah, putting information in. Sure. Absolutely. Um, there's a question. Don't forget the awesome culturally appropriate background musical. Kind of got to have that right. Background music. I, I was like, a background musical. Wow. That's a that whole production. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Set the tone, set the mood. Um, and Gene says, you can not fear making native heroes and villains for the countries your characters visited. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay, so I want us to step away. Uh, we've got about we've gone through half the program, and uh, I think that we have established our sensitivity and our thoughtfulness and our regard for those sorts of things. What are some of the things that can be unveiled in a? Um, oh, I like that. Sorry, I had to interrupt myself with the mm-hmm. breaking news from David Bodie. He says, uh, <laughs> "Sorry, <laughs> but we've talked. But have we talked about creating your own countries in the world, like mm-hmm. Marvel's Sokovia?" Sure. Yeah. I mean, or Takana, as we have in our uh, setting. Yeah. yeah. 
you could definitely create fictional countries just the same way you create fictional cities and other locations as far as yeah. that goes. Yeah. The, the, there are some advantages to that, and we'll talk about that. But this comes with a big warning. Um, the trick, uh, the difficulty with creating fictional countries is that they have a very strong tendency to default to stereotypes. Ah. Um, and uh, you have to be very careful not to that you're not creating a fictional country in order to insert a stereotype of a particular kind of country into your setting just to to get away with it because it's not that country you know right, exactly. uh, or even do it that. accidentally it's, it's yeah made up right you know? that's right um, so that's so ask yourself very carefully why you want a fictional country as opposed to using a real one um, and there are some good reasons uh, so far as that goes, um, to use uh, Dakana as an example, um, Dakana in on Earth Prime is, first of all, a uh, a uh, an homage to an existing fictional country, um, in that it is inspired by places like Wakanda and yeah. uh, Opar and other um, fictional African countries uh, from existing fiction. Um, it also has an alternate history to it um, that doesn't fit existing African countries uh, because of the existence of the Dhaka crystals uh, and the like, and how that has affected their development. Um, so they have that secret hidden civilization aspect to them with their advanced technology and all of that. Um, but because of that, you know, Dakana has a, a bit of a pastiche of different African cultures to it. Um, and it would need to be addressed pretty carefully if we were going to go into much more detail about yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. But that, that illustrates just the, you know, um, all of the research and things that needs to be done, especially just around uh, mm -hmm. a representation and making yeah. sure that the thing you're doing isn't the parody of the thing that you don't want to do. Um, I mean, the yeah. key reason why you create fictional locations in superhero settings, and the prime reason why comic book creators did it, um, is because that way nobody can tell you you're wrong. Right. That's right. When when you when you say this is the name of the capital or the president or you know uh, this is where this coffee shop is or any of those other things uh, because it's it's all made up. So yeah. you know you you don't have to worry about getting the facts right as long as you're reasonably consistent about it. That's why my book is set in Titan City and not Boston because I don't want people to tell me that street didn't exist in 1933. Right, right, yeah, and they will too. For historical stuff too, especially from Boston. Those people, although people did say the high five wasn't invented in 1933. So what do I know? Why, why, why even bother? <laughs> <laughs> so there are a lot of great questions. I'm going to dive into some of them here. Um, questions about, uh, let's see. Temp asks, have there been any adventures in Southeast Asian countries like Malaysia, Indonesia, or at least a fictional counterpart that resembles them? I don't think so i'm trying to think if there's been an eminent adventure set in southeast asia not that i can recall yeah not anything specific we have some uh, really cool places to explore in that area that's true rc says uh boston yeah absolutely and also alex check your discord i'm checking mm -hmm. i don't know why i don't know what that means but i fear for you my friend uh, Dominic says, I also want to explore international organizations. The rescue game I've been thinking about centers on an international org. Okay, well, let's talk about that. How do you put those? Uh oh. Oh, they, no. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. I can, I can only. Broken, Alex. I'll send it to you. <laughs> oh, great. Um, but and, uh, so now we've, we've talked about the possibility of, of kind of creating sort of your your fake country that is, you know, well put together and mm -hmm. uh, elements of things that you want and uh, in, a, in a way that you can speak to it. How do you put together or is there a resource somewhere within our Mutants and Masterminds library that mm -hmm. helps you build shadowy organizations or one you can just kind of pluck off the page? Well, we already have, speaking of shadowy organizations, we, mm -hmm. have, we have the literal organization Shadow oh. <laughs> uh, on Earth Prime, uh, which is certainly an international criminal conspiracy, uh, like Oranon points out. Uh, we have Unison, 
which is our uh, sort of international uh, cooperative, you know, sort of law enforcement cooperative, you know, uh, group that's working to protect the world. Um, so we have some worked examples as far as that goes um, for, that people can use uh, for their uh, M&M games uh, stuff nice. from um, the Super Team Handbook is also really useful in terms of looking at different models for teams and groups and organizations uh, so far as that goes. But um, certainly an international organization is a great framework for you know giving heroes reasons to go all over the world and to have heroes from different parts of the world cooperate as a team as far as that goes uh it makes a great backdrop for that yeah i I can imagine too if you've got one multinational organization that's doing great things for the world today and it's really not but there are (laughs) rep maybe, maybe if they decided to lean into the hero thing that there are heroes representing you know, uh, in in the places where those um, headquarters might be, you know, like the headquarters in Lima and the headquarters in, you know, all of these different places, that could be really fun and interesting and also play into that, you're my, you know, like, if you are a hero group that is working with the organization, then you have this rivalry with these other heroes that are kind of doing mm-hmm. the same thing and they want to kind sure. of be the best and, or they're the, they're the bad guys. Sure. Um, and like Oranon points out, um, those big international organizations are also often riddled with bureaucracy and political mm-hmm. fighting. Um, yeah. And so then you get into the question of, you know, is that, you know, red tape starting to bind up what the heroes can do? Are they, you know, dealing with, you know, well, we, we want to fix this problem, but, you know, the you know, management won't let us. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They're also... Uh, faceless in the sense that going all in against a corporation and their evil dudes, you know, doings and dastardly deeds is not going to hurt people's feelings. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. right. Yeah. yeah uh, maybe, maybe a Walmart adventures person. But... are such a great escalation of scale. Mm-hmm. Like when you're dealing that's with oh, yeah. an organization that's all over the world, that is the next step up from we are protecting our city or we're protecting our state or we're protecting our country. It's like this is global. It's, it's an organic space for your heroes to grow into. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, uh, I want to read this as well. Oranon says Trope Talks Planet of Hats by Overly Sarcastic Productions is a great resource to listen to about making fictional cultures. Fun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. OSP is excellent, they do really great sounds of fiction and history and mythology and they're a great place to go and get all sorts of fun information nice john dropped a link in chat that says uh, i might recommend the following site for inspiration on foreign heroes and villains it's uh internationalhero.co.uk mm-hmm. um fun OSB yeah. had an hour and a half long multiverse trope talk recently that's been wow. helping me with my uh helping me with my multiverse game i'm running mm-hmm so what is the, you know, Alex, I'm, I'm curious to kind of get into your noggin a little bit, um, but there's so much big brain in there that I won't fit. So I'll ask it from the outside. And that is to say, when you're doing this stuff, when you, what, what trips that, like, I love this, this is really scratching the intro. It's given me what I, you know, what I need. Is there a particular way that it's approached or is there a, uh, something that you're just like, there it is. I need that. Uh, I, I like to think of my brain as like an idea grinder where various chunk sized ideas show up and if they survive oh. the grinding process they're worth following okay that's it's sort of how i think of it <laughs> <laughs> and me without any lunch <laughs> that's how uh, the gravy's made actually that's how the gravy's made i like it your your brain gravies yeah um sure but no lumps. I don't know, I, that's right <laughs> i really like people's intentions and i really like people I really like how when information is presented in a way that is engaging and fun and mm-hmm. continues to open uh, open conversation rather than just explicitly stating this is the thing. I like conversations that are this is the thing because or this is the thing and this is what that means and sort of just the fractal nature of ideas is really mm. exciting. Oh yeah, agreed. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, let's see. I remember one Mutants and Masterminds Atlas supplement that had one Malaysian superhero whose power wasn't exactly dignified. Okay. I don't well, I don't know why I brought that up. No, I don't know. Um, I'm not certain I know what you're talking about, but um, 
We'll look into it. Um, what was this? Wasn't wasn't the one who was immune to capsaicin? Mm-hmm. The spicy. Yep. Okay. They're, yeah, they're talking about uh, some characters who have have superpowers, but it's questionable whether or not they're superheroes. I get it. They're, okay. they're, they're sort of local celebrities, but you yeah, know, they're they're not exactly you know out there fighting crime and saving the world. Right. Uh, right. Such. But yeah. instead, winning you know eating contests and you know um, singing and you know karaoke bars and the like. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so Oranon, you brought up the a multi- great superhero in Malaysia, is what I'm. <laughs> right? Except I'm from Ohio, so some mayonnaise is too spicy for me. So <laughs> right, that's right. Uh, Oranon says the multiverse trope talk was so good, you know, and that reminds me, we've got stuff cooking on the uh, Patreon side of things. Do would you two mind uh, um, sharing a bit because you both have a little something going on, uh, mm-hmm. talking a little bit about your stuff, and then as I dig through uh, wherever you sent me that link, <laughs> which I'm assuming is Slack or the. Was it Slack? I sent it over in Slack on the MSN okay. channel. Awesome. Thank you. Um, well, on Wednesday, I'm finally going to be running our Valentine's Day actual play. Woo! Woo! Uh, Love is in the Arrow, which is so exciting. Uh, a bunch of bow folk are going to be teaming up to do Cupid's job for a year because <gasps> Cupid needs to go on vacation. I'm sorry. I'm, la- I'm not laughing at your bow is in the... I'm laughing at something else. Right. So it's, it's, your adventure is going to be a year long? It is. I mean, it seems like it's been already, but I know. Yeah, I want to say thanks too. I mean, everybody on the Patreon was so very patient, and you know, and it was just sort of back and forth we went. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's gonna be fun. I'm gonna, I, you know, and I, Alex, I made my first animated GIF Ooh. for Love Is in the Arrow. Wow, well, that's exciting. Yeah, yeah, it's a beating heart. It's a pulsate. It as it should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's the, and, and it, it's, I keep burying it in the floorboard. That's the problem with the beating. <laughs> That's right. Yes. yes. It will be found. Um, yeah. ba, 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 ba. I see you, know, you were, you were too right about that. The theme this year has been that adulting is messing with my gaming. For real. Like I need some, I need to clear some scheduling, you know, for my games. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, well, you're going to want to clear your schedule for our games because we've got games aplenty. Uh, see what's going on with you mm-hmm. on the... And, you know, courtesy of our, you know, the way the schedule has worked out, my uh, Patreon uh, live stream game is this weekend. Um, and so this Saturday, um, folks are going to get a chance to play in a Teen Heroes game um that is a special preview of a secret project that we have not been able to talk about yet but will be very 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 soon i've been working on this since april of last year and i'm so ready to talk to people about it i just want to make sure everyone's (laughs) paying attention this is the moment where if you are a part of the patreon you're going to want to Pay attention. It's gonna you'll you'll be able to engage with all those pieces of the puzzle probably today after the program. We'll get it all set up. But yeah, it's it's the thing. And um, if you want to be a part of that thing, you better be part of the Patreon, which you can find at uh, patreon.com slash mutants A and D masterminds. I'm stoked. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Trying to think of a clever clue to give them, but I can't think of anything that's not the uh, not just the answer. I know. I've almost done that exact same thing because. Yes, yes there yeah. are two live streams yes. this week. There are two That's live right. This week. Or three if you count this one. Yeah. Just um, have faith it's going to be a good game. You just have faith or mm-hmm. you what? Mm-hmm. Just I have faith so. it's going to be a good well, game. Oh, I, oh, I, oh I gosh. That. Absolutely. Well, you know, that's accurate. yeah. And, and honestly, we don't do the thing where we're like, Hey, it's going to be cool. And it's nothing. I mean, like, you know, this is, this is, we're, we're legit. I think our bona fides in that arena are proven. Um, okay. Exactly. Uh, ah, Jonesy's here. Good deal. Um, uh, Wiki Christina says my brain is too broke to pay attention. That's okay. You can come back <laughs> because we, we record these because our brain's too right. broke when we say it. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see, John. Review. John says, "Hmm, sounds as if the Candy Crew should recruit the Capsaicin guy, <laughs> create his powers, and gain a new member. Red mm-hmm. Hot, sweet. 
get it. Can you imagine working yeah. in the Candy Crew HR? That seems rough. Yeah, yeah. I'm not super familiar with Candy Crew outside of us talking about it. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I feel like um, I need to do some oh. research. They have they have that whole serpent society problem of you know like recruiting people and being like okay now how do we make your powers more candy themed <laughs> delicious um, okay well yeah so you know we talked about our our uh, hero that uh, was created to plunder the art of the world digitally mm-hmm. and distribute it to places uh to and fro hither and yon as they say and uh (laughs) (laughs) i I keep laughing and i'm losing my spot um they are um this character called indiana jonesy I love it. I don't know if you caught that, Jonesy, but uh, oh, great. Well, it is jam packed with art today. Um, but uh, yeah, Jonesy, you are, your storyline is that you are trapped in Indiana. You are a GM, Indiana GM, Jonesy. So there you go. Nice. A little fan art. Um, and then I, I'll be back in just a moment. I've got some happy ahem. Yeah, we, we, have, <laughs> a, we have a. Much, mm-hmm. uh, much appreciated, Beckham. Stan Brown. Ahem. Oh, love the guy. Da, 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 da. The Valtori is hunting. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, you go for it. I don't know if you want to. <laughs> Jonesy, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you a copy of that, Jonesy, you know, for your uh, um, personal profile pick update. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Pilot. Oops, that's not it. Sorry. Um. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll uh, make sure you have that. Hang on a second. Oh, we'll just do this. Everyone's gonna see my my tabs. I don't yeah, care. Robert Kemp. We are working on getting Eminem into Foundry, but we don't have any more yeah. details other than it is happening. Indeed. That's there right. Have, there have been efforts, but wait, is that ongoing. two? Is that two questions? That's two in one stream. I love it. I think we should sound an alarm or something. Um, not to, you know, to cast any shade. It's just I feel like it's a jackpot of some kind. Um, it is a space we definitely need to get into. People love Foundry. Yeah. <laughs> they do. I've never they do indeed. Yeah. Well, you know, one of our other ongoing themes is only if only we had unlimited, you know, personnel and time. <laughs> right, right. We've been yeah. accomplishing so much. And all that, that tricky money biz. Are you ready? Here comes... Ready. that's so good that's great it's uh sorry that it's so weird but i wanted to pull this up because you see at the bottom here Uh uh-huh look at all the art (laughs) i just love it stan thank you so much there we go that's better you cannot find godzilla i don't know to tell you (laughs) well you know i mean and you know if you don't have a work visa you could be taking, you know, missions away from, you know, right. superheroes. That's right. Yeah. You know, these foreign superheroes coming in, stealing our crises. <laughs> <laughs> and and us that the only volunteer work you do is superhero work. We are going to grind the city to a halt. Yeah, I could tell. And that was a horrible French accent. My apologies to France. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like some kind of weird it's Russian. Like Bodes everywhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I will Correct say it was one, one of the languages mutants and masterminds has been translated into. <gasps> Mon Dieu. Indeed. Sacre bleu. That's my country. <laughs> French and person. That's that's always a good thing because the French make such pretty looking RPG books. They do indeed. They do a beautiful language too. Although I will say, having been in Paris, there was a one moment where my friend was like, "Can I get a vodka tonic?" And the person was like, "I don't know what you're talking about." Like you can just tell they were just like, "Ugh." And then um, my friend who spoke French lived in Paris. I said, "Hey, um, my friend just ordered a vodka, or, or, or you know, our buddy over here ordered a vodka tonic, but they don't know what he's talking about. What what is the word?" And so my friend who speaks French went to the person and said, uh, "Vodka tonic," and I was like, "You have got to be kidding me." Mm-hmm. Vodka tonic? Oh, that. Oh, yes. The key to the city, sirs. <laughs> I just had to say it right. Um well, so it's 253 
Holy smokes. We've talked about a ton of stuff. We've talked about lots of good things. And as per usual, we're leaving some stuff on the table um, out there um, for folks to chew on and to pontificate. Um, I'm going to find out. Simon asks again, which uh, language is Eminem officially available in and which publishers make them? I'm going to I'm going to look that up. I'm going to research. I don't think we've got it in one spot. Yeah, that's something that should probably go on our website. Don't you think? Yeah, we're actually working on that right now. We're doing that. Yeah. Uh, um, we have, I know at least two international versions of the game, mm-hmm. but I can't tell you the names of the companies that did the translation off the top of my head. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, but we do, um, we are going to, we're working on a community portal, kind of some, uh, a space where folks can kind of, kind of get lots of information about the games and other publishers and other countries and all of that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am full of instant regret. Oh, you yeah. made this one. You made it. Uh, yeah, Wiki Christina says, mind. chew on that chunky brain gravy. Nom, Love nom, it. Nom, nom, nom. You know, so chat really ruins it for us. I'm trying to get these little snippets, these little little bits of um, uh, short form video that I can share through the shorts and the uh, these and the that's and the TikToks, which were over there on TikTok, by the way. Mm-hmm. And if you're on TikTok, folks, in the chat, um, or if you're listening to this later, look for us. Green Ronin. We're there, and we are funny. We're not funny yet. Um, mm-hmm. But, uh, um, yeah, our chat is just hilarious. Um, and so we – let's see. RC says, someone made a really cool website recently of community links. Oh, I've got that. I've yeah. worked with them. They're great. Um, yeah, yeah, great stuff. And then good luck again on the Kickstarter, Alex Thomas. So let's do that real fast. Let's start with you, Steve. What have you got cooking? Just you. Uh, just me. I'm uh, working on my um, up next article for my Patreon, uh, which is patreon.com slash Steve Kenson. Um, that features a bunch of um, aliens. Um, there was mostly me telling Dan Hauser, hey, Dan, draw a bunch of weird aliens. And I'll <laughs> write an article about it. Um, and so that's pretty much what I'm doing. Love it. Link is in chat. Patreon.com slash Steve Kenson. Um, Alex, what are you doing? Oh, I'm doing all sorts of stuff. You um, are. I do have a Kickstarter going on right now for my first ever comic book called Chaotic Good. Um, if you head over to Kickstarter and look up Chaotic Good, you should be able to find. Or you it click that link that's in the chat, or you can click that link. It is a fun uh, tabletop RPG comic uh, in which a group of heroes go through their first ever uh, role playing game campaign, and they get to fight goblins and. They do all sorts of fun stuff. There's a chicken. She's great. I love Um, it. As for what else I've got going on, uh, I don't have our regular stream this week because we have our special M&M developer Q&A stream, or our special actual play this Wednesday. Yes. But next Wednesday, I'll be back for Freedom League Dark in the Multiverse of the Master Mage over at twitch.tv slash Untold Stories Project. I love it. Um, Fantastic. Adrian Eldridge is running amok. Mm Mm-hmm. A muck, a muck, a muck. Um, right. Hey, um, guess what? A were chicken? Asked David Bodie. Uh, that's a spoiler. I can't tell you what the chicken's deal is. Her name is Roger. <laughs> She's great. Her name, and I love it. Um, yeah, so you don't get to know where chicken. Let's see. But if, Magnus... you do, uh, if you did order a uh, chicken mini pickup, you can pick it up at Origins. I'll have it there. Hey, guess what? I'm backing. <laughs> yeah. Of I'm a fan. I'm a fan. You're, you're, you're a man of taste, Troy. Oh, don't you think? Yes, yeah. I do love a tasty chicken. Um, let's the Bowman see. Adventure is on Wednesday, Nate Robbins. That's right. That's mm-hmm. right. And it will be here. Uh, we will be doing, and this is the same studio, same spot right here. We'll be hanging out and um, and having some fun. So that'll be great. And uh, anything else we want to share? I think we've got, you know, don't forget about our 50% off the Sentinels of Earth Prime. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, some phenomenal ideas. And I, I think at some point we should do just sort of a, tools and uh mechanics of play and how you you know what things you might be able to do uh, of course um i want to say thanks to gene what a great subject we really um enjoyed it. it it of course sparked a lot of discussion which was uh which is great and that's yes. you know that's the most that's the, the most you can hope for and or the best you can hope for rather so you get the um the hero point nice the hero point yeah, but it works in real life. So whatever you want, you just, uh, you know, you got, you got a hero point. Just use it. Just tell them, you know, hey, I, I'm um, 
yes, I can uh, be lounging in this fountain in the middle of the mall uh, yes, with I no clothes on. That. Here's my hero point. <laughs> they are legally binding. <laughs> they are legally binding. Yes, I, I, I thank you, uh, sirs and madams. Um, hey, chat, you are phenomenal. We really enjoy hanging out with you and, and having all kinds of fun. Thanks to our fan artist folk. <laughs> Colin, Colin Stan, a fan artist, is hilarious because he's a very talented professional right. and a wonderful human being. Um, RC, thank you for the uh, <laughs> for the Indiana Jonesy. Um, I do like to see my quips come to life. That will be a short. I'll make that happen. Um, but um, outside of that, you know, we will be back here next Monday. Am I? I'm, yes, we will be back here next Monday. Um, mm -hmm. But in betwixt, we have Thursday. And Thursday is all about the age uh, adventure game engine and uh, age products and all kinds of good stuff. And we have lots of dialogues. We talked about something really good last week when that was the Age Creators Alliance. So there's some updates and things. And we may continue an extension of that conversation this Thursday, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. So come hang out. But uh, for today, I say thank you for joining us and have a good rest of your week. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. Take care. Adieu. Adieu. <laughs>